the arrest actually took place the second. Um, the judge noticed that he had a prior arrest for trespassing and that the trial date for that was uh, set Tuesday, the morning after he appeared in court. His bail was revoked and he was put in jail until uh, trial on Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, so he spent the night in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm assuming he didn't anticipate that happening. No, no one did. And then Tuesday night, he or Tuesday morning, he went to the to the judge before the judge again. And what happened then? Uh, Tuesday, when he was uh, brought out in the orange jumpsuit um, for his uh, his uh, beginning of the trial. They asked him if he was ready, and he had not been appointed a public defender yet, nor did he have an attorney, so he said no and requested an attorney. Uh, Judge Dominguez said that he would give him a public defender, and that his next court date would be March 13th. And so he anticipates being in prison until March 13th. Yes. But he, but Tim Summers does have another court hearing tomorrow, mm -hmm. again in front of Judge Dominguez. Yes. What could happen then, and why so many court dates this week? Is it because there's two different trespass charges? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because there's two different arrests and three different charges on them. Uh, tomorrow, we have really no clue what can happen. Um, I guess there's a possibility that he could be uh, released, but uh, with how Judge Dominguez has treated the Occupy protesters, it's very doubtful. He didn't have a lawyer, as you mentioned, on Monday, how, and then he was appointed a public defender. How has that progressed? Is he, is he going to go with the public defender, or does he have a private lawyer? Uh, we're all still searching for public defenders, but uh, as it looks right now, he will have a public defender. All right. Thanks. And let me also ask Ben Cheru. You were one of the people that was arrested at Riverside Park the night of December 1st, the morning of December 2nd, when there were 29 Occupy Tampa protesters who were arrested. That was a, a giant night of, of arrests that night. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the people that was arrested for trespassing. You also have a court date tomorrow. Um, no, actually, my uh, arraignment was uh, on Monday. My mistake. Um, Sorry yeah, about that. No. So what happened when you were arraigned? Um, well, I was in the courtroom with uh, Tim as well, with um, Judge Dominguez, and uh, there were several of us there, and as each of us stepped up, uh, you could tell he knew we were occupied Tampa, um, and you could sense that he was getting progressively more almost annoyed with us and uh, it, angry in a way, and it escalated um, with every single person. and. Um, when I stepped up, he even uh, made the plea for me because he figured what I would plea. And uh, and um, then Tim came after me, and you could tell that uh, like that was just kind of like the final straw. He was like, wait, you have a court date tomorrow for another trespassing? Okay, well, you can just sit in jail then. So, yeah, and um, it was just interesting because you could, you could tell there was just an obvious bias towards the Occupy uh, Tampa members there. Um, we had... Uh, we w we watched him uh, give a uh, just oh he uh, we had a person actually uh, in a domestic dispute with his wife um, receive a uh, uh, non adjudication um, and a ten dollar fine and another guy who had uh, fired a shotgun in downtown Tampa with the same thing and it's just he seems to be a pretty easy going judge with some people but. Uh, for whatever reason with us, he's trying to send a message. 813-239-9663. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can give us a call and ask a question of one of our guests or make a comment on what you think about what's going on here. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And I apologize I got it wrong that you, you don't have a hearing tomorrow, but there are a lot of people in Occupy Tampa. About how many, Cade, people have have hearings tomorrow in Hillsborough County Court from Occupy Tampa? Um, right now, I'm looking at eight names that I know have court tomorrow, and I'm fairly sure that there is at least one more person who does. And how many of these are people who were only ar arrested one time for trespassing, and if you know, and about how many might, might face the same thing that, that Tim Summers is facing? Daiquiri, I believe, has been arrested five times now, so... Uh, he is definitely one of the people who are um, facing jail time. Uh, Scott and Nick, I believe, have both been arrested three times. Nick might have just been arrested twice, though. But they uh, they all appear to, uh, everyone else at least, appears to be on their first arrest, mm -hmm. in Tampa at least. Now, I don't happen to know much about, um, I don't, I'm not an expert on the law, 
you guys probably aren't experts on the law, but I, I think that you've done a little bit of digging as a group. And tell us what, what kind of precedent it has there been for for people who have just been charged with trespassing that you've found, what kinds of um, examples have you found of people being put in jail with just trespassing charges? It varies judge to judge, so it's uh, it's really hard to do, uh, decipher something like that. I uh, was arrested on the first as well, and my court trial was, or my arraignment was the fifteenth, and the state decided to drop my charge for resisting arrest <clears throat> and go a little lighter on me, but people who have had Judge Dominguez have not had the same uh, luxury. So it's one of those one of those things that it's entirely up to the judge. I'm going to exp we have a caller but I, I want to explore that just for just quickly. Mm -hmm. So you are charged with resisting arrest which is a felony, right? Uh, it is a class 1 misdemeanor. I'm sorry. So what made did, what was it about it that made them drop it? Do you know anything? Did you get any indication about why they would drop it? I didn't, but at this point they uh, dropped mine and one other person's charge, both in uh, front of Judge Greco, while Dominguez has gone very hard on everybody. So. All right, thanks. That's Occupy Tampa's Kate Kelly, and we're also speaking with Ben Sharu from Occupy Tampa. And we're talking about Tim Summers, who's in jail. He's one of the people from Occupy Tampa who's been trespassed and arrested twice for being in public parks after being told to leave in the last couple of months. And we're, if you'd like to join the conversation, you can call 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And joining us on the phone right now is Reverend McKenzie. Hello, Reverend McKenzie. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Judges are appointed, but I believe that they have to be uh, elected to hold it. Uh, hold their position longer. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this uh, this whole experience has really highlighted some of the issues with the justice system. Um, and it's really eye-opening when you witness it firsthand. Um, I mean, these judges really do have a lot of power and over people's lives. Like this isn't a joke. Like he's, Tim is potentially sitting in jail for months. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely is frustrating. You know, we're we're trying to uh, get the word out um, that you know we're being uh, persecuted because we're political. Um, I mean, this it it was pretty clear, honestly. I mean, you know, it's not shocking, but at the same time, you just hope that people might you know be a little more reasonable and not throw somebody in jail for three months who's uh, at least three months who was sitting in a park overnight allegedly. So I was looking on the website, um, Hillsborough County Elections 2010, County Court Judge James Dominguez was, um, was elected as County Court Judge Group 1 um, in the 20, 2010 elections, it looks like, um, from the examiner.com. 813-239-9663. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to Pepe in Dunedin. And I should say that Pepe is another Occupy Tampa member. He was arrested, I believe. Um, were you one of the first six that was arrested? Well, hey, how you doing?
have your amount for calling, you have your first name, and where you're calling from. Uh, yes, there are. There is, there is. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have um, our, our reporter, WMF reporter Janelle Irwin, will be there tomorrow to to make sure you know to see what happens in those in the courtrooms. Um, there's they're going to be in several courtrooms at once, but um, I'm I think she'll be in Judge Dominguez's courtroom at 8:30 in the morning um, when when those hearings start. You too. Thanks for the call. We'll go now to Dave in Clearwater. Hi, Dave. Yeah, thanks for that comment, Dave. Let's see what Ben has to say about that. Well, yeah, um, you're absolutely right. That is the way it is. But this, that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing, is because things are the way are they are, and it's messed up. The system is broken. Um, just because it's been that way for a long time doesn't make it any more right. You know, we, if you identify an injustice, you have to stand up against that and uh, fight the system no matter what. I mean, we realize what we are getting into, um, and none of this is shocking necessarily, but, I mean, yeah, you, you have to change the system. I mean, just because that's the way it's been doesn't mean that's the way it should be. Dave? Oh, did we lose Dave? Okay, thanks for that call, Dave. Let's go now to David in Port Ritchie. Hi, David. Well, the, the person who's in, in, um, incarcerated, Tim Summers, I believe he's a volunteer firefighter um, who's actively seeking work. Is that, is, am I characterizing that correctly? To my understanding, that's So right. I would imagine, um, David, that, that it would be really hard to, to continue to look for work if, you know, if you can't. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs>
We have a lot of workers. In fact, I was employed working 50-hour weeks while I was a full-time student and still making it down every day. So it's, it's a very diverse group of people who, you know, a lot of people who work a lot. Some are retired. So it, uh, it varies. David, thank you for for your call, and I I'm, I'm, I point you to our website. About maybe a month or a month and a half ago, our reporter down in Sarasota did a story about you know what the Occupy Sarasota movement and how they were employed, and it was a really good story. So I point you to that if you want to search on our website wmnf.org/news and search for Occupy Sarasota, you'll find that website. So thanks for calling, David, and let's go now to Rich in River, Riverview. Hi, Rich. Good. Doing good. Do, do either of you have an opinion about that? Hmm. I hadn't been made aware of that. Um. Mm -hmm. He does? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the the 99% versus the 1% is more of a sort of a catchphrase. I mean, you can be part of the 1% and still be part of us. Um, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's really all about a uh, how you want to use your wealth and uh, everything else. In fact, one of the uh, first people I met on one of our first marches, I believe the sixth, uh, was a self-described one percenter. He owned a business, multimillionaire. So it's not about your fiscal worth. It's about uh, kind of how you throw it around. Kind of if you consider yourself the upper echelon of politics and wealth. Thank you. So am I. <laughs> Me as well. I don't crucify a single wealthy American. I. That's a statistic. <laughs> I don't know. I. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that call in Riverview. I'm going to read an email and then go back to the phones. If you'd like to join this conversation, you're listening to the last call. It's 5:51 in the afternoon. I'm Sean Canan, and our guests are Ben Sheru and Cade Kelly from Occupy Tampa. The number to call is 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org, and that's what Lloyd did in Lakeland. He said, relinquishing our freedoms is, unfortunately, often too easy. Getting them back is not. Not enough Americans understand or appreciate what the Occupy movement is really doing to defend everyone's freedoms against the encroaching tide of despotism in this country. So that's the email from Lloyd in Lakeland. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. Let's go now to Owen in Tampa. Hi, Owen. Good? Good. What's going on? Well, um, I, I definitely agree that we were not urinating in the park, or uh, I don't remember what his other uh, example was offhand, but I mean, we were definitely fighting for our First Amendment rights. And um, yeah, I mean, he did really nothing wrong, and he, he had uh, no appearance that he was going to flee or leave. He was definitely uh, going to return to court. But. Uh, Thank you for the call, Owen. 
I want to go now to Alvaro in Tampa. Hi, Alvaro. Thank you for the call, Alvaro. Um. Absolutely. Um, and one uh, thing I wanted to address about that 99% versus the 1% thing is it, it's not just about that. It's, we're fighting the system that allows this kind of thing to take place. Um, you know, you don't hate the players, you hate the game. Well, that, they're working within a system, you know, that allows for this kind of corruption and greed to buy politicians and do all the things we're fighting against. So it's not that just that, you know, we're hating on like evil uh, uh, fat cats up in uh, Wall Street or whatever. We're we're trying to change the system to not allow this kind of thing to happen. All right, let's go now to Rob in Tampa. Hi, Rob. Doing good. All right. I have... Thank you for that call, Rob. All right, let's see if we can go to another caller right now. How about Jan in Tampa? Jan, are you there? Thanks for calling. <laughs> 